Um, Joe, can you talk a bit about what differentiates pharmacies um, who are taking care of rare disease patients from a, a more, I'm going to use air quotes here, traditional specialty uh, pharmacy practice? Yeah, definitely. And I think it builds nicely off of what Bruce was just saying. I think the first thing that jumps out at me are these dedicated teams to take care of rare disease patients. And and there could be overlap. So if you are a clinician, you might be working with more than one rare disease or with more than one orphan drug. But for each rare disease or for each orphan drug that the pharmacy is dispensing, there's going to be a dedicated care team. And I think that that care team is often made up of both clinical and non-clinical personnel. But these are really the experts in these drugs or in these disease states. I think along with that, I also see increased trainings um, throughout these organizations. And these are clinical trainings, certainly, to make sure that the clinicians on those teams are up to date on, on, on everything that has to do with that caring for those patients. But I think it also um, has to do with non-clinical trainings. And this could be communicating with patients. Um, it, it can be uh, trainings on awareness, whether that's cultural awareness or empathy for, for patients in their situation as they're dealing with their rare disease. Um, and I think probably the last thing that really comes to mind is maybe a more robust benefits investigation team. And this is going to build off of a close relationship that the pharmacy has with the manufacturer. But that benefits investigation team really is going to be helpful in providing access to the medications for the patients and even being able to try and locate financial assistance for those patients. As we've seen, and Bruce would, would I'm sure have the same opinion, that these medications often, the largest barrier to them is, is cost. And so having this benefits investigation team that can try and, and find resources for patients is so key in helping them with their experience and in their journey. Yeah, I think the most successful pharmacies that we see are those that really have the willingness, you know, both management and their clinical teams to contribute the time, effort, staff, and money to effectively manage, you know, a population that may or may not fit into the traditional pharmacy model. Obviously, these are not volume-based therapies, so they do fall outside of what pharmacies are normally used to taking care of. It's not just adding a, a drug or a therapy. It's an entirely different model. And, and lastly, I think the one of the most important things that I do see in a successful organization is the understanding and the empathy of the staff mm -hmm. um, to, to really learn about their patients. And we'll talk about this later, learn about their journey, their barriers. Um, that kind of separates the, the really good organizations, I think. Mm 